I'm your host, William Beam. Welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode number three. Today, we're going to ask the question, should you post your photos on social media or are they better off on your blog? Hi, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show. You can find us at photoflunky.com. That's part of my website at williambeam.com. All right, so this is a question that most of us want to look into. We've got our photos. We need to be able to share them with people. And what you really need to think of first, whether it's going to be online with social media or online with your blog, is what is your goal? I mean, are you looking at sharing with family and friends? Are you trying to attract clients, customers, people who want to pay you for either a print or a service or something that you're going to do? Or the other part of it is, are you competing with your other fellow photographers? I mean, there's a good sense of community among photographers. We all like to see what each other are doing, and it helps us up our game. It helps us think about some of the things that we could be doing, and a little healthy competition is good. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the benefits of social media. Here's the nice part. There are plenty of eyes on social platforms. You're going to find millions of people out there that are potential for your audience, whether they're going to be someone who admires your photos, someone that's going to become a friend or someone who may become a customer. It's a really good place to make friends and start relationships. And also, if you're in business, it's a great place to use it as a funnel to drive traffic to your blog. The problem with social media, though, is that your images, your posts, the things that you share are temporary. They can be gone, you know, in moments or a day. Depends on which platform you're looking at. So you post something on Twitter. It's about 20 minutes later. No one knows it was there. On Facebook, you can have an audience with a following of hundreds or thousands or larger uh, groups of people, but not all of them are going to see what you post. Not only just because they're not on at the same time that you're posting it, and it's, but because Facebook simply isn't going to show it to everyone that's on there. You can use these social media platforms to share. And if that's the extent of your goal, that's perfect. And by social media, I'm going to include sites like 500px and Flickr. There's great communities there. There's wonderful opportunities to share. And if that's your goal, I don't think you really need to go to the time and trouble of setting up a blog. But if you do want to take it a step further, you got a few benefits of going with a blog. First off, it has only your voice. There's no competition for attention. You don't have to worry about somebody clicking on a link that's going to take them to someone else's photo or someone else's site unless you put it there. You can optimize your content for search engine traffic. And if you're trying to bring people in, this is a good thing to, to look for. Photos are, and Google and other search engines don't really get along, but there are little tips that you can do to try and get people to see your photographs. One of the things that uh, most photographers with a blog do was they'll not only put in the little alt text images that uh, Google can read when they're searching for photographs. It gives them a little description of what it's about but put it on a blog post that is very descriptive and long about your subject. So for example, one of my uh, most sought after photos that people contact me for to license or use is a uh, Washington DC, you know, the Capitol building sunset photo. It's, it's one of my favorites. I get contacted all the time, but that's also because it's on my blog with text in there that makes it easy for someone to find if they're going through a search engine. Uh, the same photo is available on Facebook. It's available on Flickr. I never get contacted from those sites. I do know a few people that get contacted on Twitter for some sales, but by and large, when I get contacted for someone who's looking to give me money for print or license usage of one of my photographs, it comes from my blog because I've been able to optimize it for search engine traffic. The other side of this is blog content shared to social media can have more impact than if you just post it straight to social media. And what I mean by that are some of the technologies like Twitter cards and open graph. So for example, if I paste a link from one of my blog posts into Twitter, the Twitter card with uh, the simple, um, well, excuse me, a summary with a large image. That's the one I'm talking about. So I had to give that a little bit of thought. There's, there's a little uh, trick that you can do. And if you've got uh, Yoast SEO, you can put it in there in the social and just tell it to use summary with large image. So it gives you a few different ways that can lead back to your blog. The most obvious is, the summary is the Twitter text that you type. The large photograph will be there. But underneath that, there will be the first part of your blog post. In other words, the first couple of sentences are going to be there along with your blog URL and your name. So it gives a little bit of a different look than if you just posted the photograph straight to Twitter. 
and it gives more things that someone can click on to bring them back to your site. Open Graph helps uh, Facebook build a profile. So if people are visiting your site and that gets put in their Open Graph, other people who are looking at them can see where they've been. All these little things build up to bring people back to your site. One of the things that I really like about posting my photos on my blog versus social media is that I can be in control of the size and quality of the image on there. Facebook is notorious for compressing images uh, heavily. So you may not have the best quality image that's uh, showing up on social media. If you do it on your own blog, you're in charge of that. There's the trade-off, of course, you know, between the size of your image versus how long, um, how well it's going to show on your display and how long it's going to take to download. So you've got to be careful that you don't post something that's so large that it takes too long to download that nobody really wants to come there. For the most part, you can get better looking images on your blog than you're going to get on social media. Another thing to consider on the on your own website and your own blog, you set the terms of service. Over the past few years, there has been all sorts of hand wringing, yelling, screaming, and so forth about Facebook and its terms of service and other things. Basically, a lot of photographers have looked at that and says they're claiming rights to own our photographs. It's not 100% quite correct. They don't own your photographs, but you do give them a license to use it as they want to. It's a transferable license, which means theoretically, Facebook could take photographs that are uploaded to its site, sell it to a third party as a stock agency if they wanted to, and that would be completely legal because those are in the terms of service that every subscriber has agreed to in order to be present on Facebook. A lot of photographers definitely get upset about that, but for the most part, Facebook hasn't done that yet. And the keyword is yet. Are they going to end up becoming a stock agency of some sort? I'm not sure if that's in their business plan. I don't think it is, but the capability is there because if you're posting your photos online and you've already signed the terms of agreement and by clicking here and acknowledged what you probably didn't read, you've agreed that they can do that. The other uh, concern with the blog is it's not spam if they come to you. In other words, when you're posting out to social media, you do it too much, people are going to get turned off. They're going to say, oh, you're just spamming us. You're giving us the same message over and over and over again. It gets tiresome for people. If people are coming back to your site, though, it's not spam. They can look at as much as they want to or leave whenever they want to. But they're your guests. They're your visitors. And they're interested in your message. That's a wonderful opportunity to take advantage of that you can't get necessarily from a social media platform. And to me, this is the most important one, a benefit of having a blog. You can convert visitors into customers, clients, subscribers. In other words, they've come to your site. What action do you want them to take? Do you want them to contact you about a photography session? Do you want them to buy a print? Do you want them to sign up for your email list? You can give them the opportunity to do something right then and there. All right. Let's assume that you've got a blog. You've got social media. How do you make the most of it? Well, the first thing, don't cross post. Every time you come up with a blog post, the, the urge is write something up once, put it in each platform and send it out there to the masses and do it multiple times. The problem with that is you can screw up by posting the same thing to all social media platforms at the same time. And that's because features from one platform may look out of place on another. So for example, your Facebook audience doesn't want to see a request to retweet this post. Your Instagram audience, you know, isn't going to like this. They might heart it, but... The general consensus is use each social media platform the way that it was intended to do. And that means you can craft your message. And it doesn't mean that you can't send the same general thought or query to each platform, but you want to customize it for your audience. So, for example, tailor your message to the platform you're using. Facebook gives you a lot more room to write. So use it to be engaging. Twitter is very concise. You can use that to create interest to click a link to your site just like I said before with the summary with large image. And you just want to write things down differently every time you're going to post them out there. And this is something that I'm starting to address and engage with my own social media platforms is you need to come up with something unique. It's, chances are your audience on social media may not have seen what you sent off earlier in the morning if they're logged on in the afternoon. And that's one of the reasons like for on Twitter particularly, you're going to send things two or three times a day just because your audience is going to be on at different times of the day, you give everybody a chance to see it. But if you've got the same person out there seeing it all day long, they don't want to see the same thing every time. So mix it up a little bit. Come up with different headlines for every post. Anyways, those are my thoughts and opinions. I would love to hear yours. 
You can uh, leave comments on this and every other episode. You can go to photoflunky.com and you can find the show notes for this episode at williambeam.com slash episode three. Thank you for listening to the Photo Funky Show. I'm William Beam. If you'd like to stay in touch with us, it's easy to do. Just send a text message to 33444 and use the word Flunky, F-L-U-N-K-Y. There are no additional costs from us, just only whatever your carrier charges. And I'll keep you up to date on photography and blogging information. You're going to get a welcome message back from WilliamBeam.com. If you have any comments, suggestions, please let me know at WilliamBeam.com slash episode three. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Pretty soon we're going to get this show on iTunes and I'll be looking for you there. <laughs>